Don't look under the internet. <laughs> Alright, I'll have to I'll have to hit the P.O. box this week. Hell yeah. Oh shit, okay. Somebody sent us a P.O. A personal Ooh, somebody personal otter. We have that otter now. <laughs> welcome, <laughs> welcome everybody to Don't Look Under the Internet. <laughs> Oh my God, Mike isn't gracing your ear holes with the intro this week. He's not. Oh my yeah. God. Everybody's Weird. gonna have to adjust. We're gonna have to adjust. You're gonna have to adjust. Mike had a fucking kid. He did. And don't worry, this is the same podcast. It's just Mike is, you know, being a father. Yeah. Uh, and it's, I don't it's think real. it's that important, but he seems to. So, you know, <laughs> That's we're fair. letting him do it. I agree. We're letting him have his own time. He broke our number one rule. Uh, where we don't condone children yeah. on this podcast, and he he condoned them, and here we yeah. are. And so, so now to be he's fair, taking a timeout. Oh yeah, he's in timeout for at least a month. Straight, Actually, who knows? Straight to jail. <laughs> but <laughs> straight to you jail. know what? I guess that means somebody else this week has to do Deluti housekeeping Clap above your head. Woo! So I hope that this lines week up. we've got. <laughs> oh, it's not going to. This week we've got. Two people to shout out. Uh, one is Vindictive Fox. Thank you, Vindictive Fox. Uh, Hell yeah. Thanks I'm for glad Matt pulled this up. Being vindictive <laughs> and sharing it with us. And then keeping the trend with vindictiveness and just all around ill will for humanity, we've got V for Vendetta. Thanks, V for Ooh, Vendetta. The whole movie for, subscribed to us. The whole movie. The whole not just movie. The, not just the V speech, the whole movie. Yeah, the whole hour and I don't know how fucking long. Wouldn't it have been impressive if I had known down to the minute how long exactly V for Vendetta? Is? I would have been impressed, hundred yeah. <laughs> percent. Well, it would be like my, it would be like Mike is here. If we, if I'm being honest, <laughs> I don't. But That's knowledge he is. We, you know, v, v for Vendetta is a pretty old movie, and when we talk about media that is pretty old, uh, you know what comes to my mind? Old albums <laughs> from old bands. <laughs> Bands like <laughs> The Doors and The Rolling Stones. And Did, there's another right, one everybody. from like that same era that I can't quite think of. Can anybody help me out? Uh, welcome oh, to Ash Vlogs who? Part 5. No, no, no. Yeah, we are, we, guys, I know the Beatles references were not lost on you guys. We are right back in it with Ash Vlogs again this week. I'm so sorry. I know I mentioned that I had something from January 2023 last time, but I couldn't find it. Well, guess what, fuckers? I fucking found it. And you know what it says? We're not talking about Ash Vlogs anymore because <laughs> I'm so fucking done with it. <laughs> well, there is something from Ash Vlogs we are going to talk about. There it, is, it, yes. Can, it, it's about submarines. and mm -hmm. How and yellow they are. How yellow they are. And yeah. people who talk like this. Be yeah. It's about the Beatles. <laughs> Holy shit. Hey, Ringo. <laughs> Ringo, <laughs> Ringo, I lost my album, Ringo. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to find it. This week, we're talking oh, yeah. about thebeatlesneverbrokeup.com. Yep, that's a website, and it's that it's, it's it's just as verifiable as you probably think it is. Very, <laughs> very legit it. website. Look it up. It's fantastic. Um, I will say, I know we did this last time, but we want to start off with a little clink and drink. Yeah. Tell us what we're, what we're, what we're drinking. What are you drinking? What are you thinking? There's a bottle here, and it's empty. Yeah. 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 Perfect. What are we drinking, Doug? Four roses, just as usual. Just as usual. I got some shilling grapefruit ciders. Those are fucking fantastic. Grapefruit? I'm back to got, my man? old trusty liquid death. Hell yeah. Ah, oh, hell yeah. Classic. Liquid death, Ringo. Not an official Ringo. sponsor. They're putting sparkling water in cans now, Ringo. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to do the Beatles impression all the fucking time. Like... <laughs> Okay. Mike's Mike's Vegeta voice is like it's your Beatles voice is right on par. They're flying monkey men, Ringo. They're, oh. they're blowing things up. <laughs> Freaking me out. Love that. All right. Well, me anyway, out, does one of us want to actually talk about? Oh, yeah. Yes. The cheers, and then uh, I'll I'll tell this story. <laughs> yeah. 
Cheers, guys. When you hit Dude. the clink, please drink. Boop. Anyway, Doug, what the fuck are we talking about? Or explain. Wouldn't you like to know? Not really. No. Um. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I'm going to go over the story real quick. It's, Hell yeah. It's, it's an interesting one, all right? So... I'm going to I'm going to paraphrase this a little bit but basically the following is an actual account of my experiences as of recently because of the nature of what has happened I must re remain anonymous until I feel it is safe to reveal my name quick point this uh so this story is being told from somebody from the first person so this is like some guy's like journal entry right so your recounts if you go to the website this is what you'll be greeted with yep. essentially so uh I feel it is safe, or uh, I'm going to remain anonymous until I feel it is safe to reveal my name, but for now you can refer to me as James Richards, which we will talk about later. Oh, yeah. So, dude comes into a possession Big of a cassette Jim tape. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Jim Dick. Jim Dick. Um, so this guy, he comes into possession of a cassette tape, uh, basically, uh, with a Beatles album that was never released. However, it was recorded long after they broke up, and it's not their Klaatu album. Um, I guess this guy must have got a lot of like, but it's it's that one. Uh, yeah, there are a <laughs> lot of diehard Beatles fans that have a lot to say about this. Yeah, so basically he goes on to assure everyone he's not crazy or on drugs and that this is his story. So he lives in California and he was going to visit a friend one day and he was driving through Del Puerto Canyon with his dog and decided... Uh, that he needed to pull over to the side of the road because his dog looked like it was gonna like piss or shit himself or something. Okay, piss or shit. So <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know as dogs do. As dogs do. Yeah. yeah so yeah. <laughs> they pull over to the side of the road, and once they get out, the dog ends up starting to chase a rabbit, I guess. And while chasing down his dog, uh, he ends up stepping into a uh, a hole and straight knocking himself out. So. Once he wakes up, he yeah, wakes up ass. in a room. Yeah, right. <laughs> I fell in the hole, Ringo. Um, <laughs> can you draw us a picture? Give myself a concussion. Can get... <laughs> draw, draw yeah, us a... Matt, please keep that on deck. Please okay. keep that yeah, voice right. on deck. <laughs> so he ends up waking up in a room with some furniture and some like weird electronics, and he's like his head's bandaged up and all that shit. You know, um, normal Tuesday. Yeah, normal Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Um, so he said he was near some like weird electronic machine that he'd never seen before, had no idea what the fuck he was looking at. Uh, and he, so he goes to get up and look out the window, but was immediately greeted by his dog running through the door of whatever room he was in, followed by a tall man, about six feet tall, super long black hair, uh, and dressed very casually, uh, like following behind the dog. So. How tall are you, Doug? I am... Short as shit. So I'm, okay, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a solid five, oh, seven, five, five eight. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, all right. All right. I'm just making sure. Yeah. Six feet, I guess, isn't that tall, but that's just how it was described. So <laughs> you're six um, feet. Anyway, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to round up, bud. By so the, foot. Uh, <laughs> the man said he found uh, our. Our hero. I don't even know if that that's not the right way to no, describe no, that. But. At this point, we are going to call him our hero for yeah. sure. Our, our hero. hero and, <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> so he said he found him in a field and he decided he was going to help him out uh, and, and his dog. And the guy asked where he was. And so this is actually a direct like part of the story, but it says about 20 feet of, away from where I found you, he replied. I told him that it couldn't be possible because there were no houses within at least 20 miles from where I was last remember being. So the guy was like questioning, yeah. like, how the fuck did you find me where in this you... like random place out in like a canyon? Yeah. Uh, and then he told me that he was going to say, or so let me restart. He then told me that what he was going to say next will be very shocking and unbelievable. And that if he didn't actually experience it himself, then he wouldn't believe it. He took a look at the machine near the window and looked back at me and he said, he transported me into a parallel earth. He oh. said he traveled to our Earth dimension and found me knocked out in the blazing heat with nobody around to help me. Normally, he said he doesn't take outsiders through a portal, but in my case, he thought he need I needed urgent help. What? <laughs> what? So, TLDR, man falls in hole, uh -huh. wakes up in 
house in parallel dimension. In Earth Prime. Earth 69420. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> okay. So that's where the story I, I is I'm so far. You. Okay. So then he fires <laughs> off a bunch of parallel world questions to this man. What is that? Okay. Can you define what's that? A, what is that? Yeah. Mean? What's a parallel world question? I mean, it's probably As, like the how you do that. What that is. <laughs> How that how? doesn't sound like a parallel world question. It does. sounds I, just I like a parallel exactly world how they question. Ask questions in an academic setting in parallel worlds. I, I mean, if I woke up, I'd be like, "What that is? What that is? Where that where, is. where is where, I? Where you? Where you? <laughs> Where's my head? You know? Um, yeah. So he's like, he, he's basically old. rapid fire questioning this man about stuff and. Basically, the, the guy replies with, it's quite easy to get a parallel travel machine in his world. Oh, so yeah. it's a very commonplace thing, which will well, make more sense in a little bit. parallel 7-Eleven. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just go there. 11-7. Mm, that makes way more sense. A little different. You get a, a free different. Diet Coke when you buy two of them. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, they're all owned by Android John Lemons. <laughs> <laughs> we got those too. <laughs> One, two slushy for the price of three. I'm so sorry. I'm just gonna laugh every time he does that. So like. I know it's very good. It's very, it's very entertaining. <laughs> Fucking hell! All right. So oh, basically, man. the tall man, as we know him right now, says that the, his world ended up funding a program called ARP D, or the Parallel Dimension Program, instead of funding NASA. So, so they put all their resources into this thing. So instead of going up or down, they wanted to go sideways. Exactly. <clears throat> Which is probably smarter to do. Sideways anyways. But time. either way. Yeah. Sideways through Fuck time. Fuck rockets. We're going sideways. We're going sideways, We're going sideways Ringo. Time, Ringo. <laughs> Make it stop. I did too much. It's not, it's not gonna stop at this point. It's not gonna stop. Um, so he goes on to explain that exploring these oh, unlimited man. amounts oh, of what dimensions. Did you give me? <laughs> Through time, Paul. <laughs> Damn it! I thought Where I did had you get control. these? <laughs> it went sideways through time, and go. Fucking hell! God damn it! You just let me know when I'm good again. You're good, man. I I Never. just don't know what you said for the last minute. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> okay. So if you didn't, if if all right, let's just get everybody back on board here. All right. He goes on to explain. Get on board the submarine. <laughs> let's get it. Let's Going through time. Get, give him. I'm, I have nothing. I have nothing. I'm just gonna smoke it out. Smoke it. <laughs> that's exactly what I did, and that's how we got here. Oh, man. Okay, I'm good. I thought things would be easier with Mike not here. I really did. Hey, I don't know I'm why you. Thought that. I tried. I tried <laughs> to be too. positive about it. I was like, Mike's not here. We'll get There's so much done. <laughs> Apparently not. I'm just. I can't get past it. It's wow, so out. good. <laughs> It's yeah, perfect. thank you. Perfect. Wow, is that we, everybody? We didn't even cut, but here we are. Oh man. <clears throat> Anyways, to get everyone to. caught back up, uh, they funded ARP D, not NASA. So here we go. So it goes on to explain that exploring these unlimited amounts of dimensions can be very dangerous uh, because of how many dimensions are unexplored, and that there is a very chance of instant death upon entering a new portal. Now, this could be falling because you just walked oh, out into the air. Like 30 feet up or some shit. It could be drowning because you just are now in the sea or something like that. Um, you could travel to a, a dimension that doesn't produce oxygen. And You're that could be a thing. telling me that they figured out how to build this shit to go across dimensions, but they can't make it go down six stories? <laughs> Absolutely. Is, <laughs> that is what I'm saying. It. Okay. Right. They'll get you, you there. You telling but... me a shrimp? <laughs> <laughs> fried this rice <laughs> shrimp with fingers Sheesh. <laughs> apparently I'm really tired yes I'm sorry <laughs> just slap happy as shit <laughs> alright so their government ends up creating a list of public dimensions that are safe to travel to that, ba that basically this machine will take you and you'll be you'll be Gucci to go okay. when you get there okay um, now this is another direct quote from the story, but it says, Many of these worlds were lush with vegetation. They, uh, they were never ruined by man, 
only to be invaded by the large, overcrowded population of travel uh, of the travelers of his this world. This guy's world. Okay. Um, he said something about new industries that open up because of this, and one of them being something like a dimensional life brokers. And these people offered the chance to live as someone new in an already established similar world that doesn't know of dimensional travel, nor that the, that their people are crossing the dimensional border to get there. Hmm. So. Jonas, like we which we now all around the dimensions, <laughs> make the other dimensions, pay and for they're going to pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> Time travelers. Um, <laughs> Time travelers. <laughs> so Mike Jonas is here. Mike, like, he just is. <laughs> he I lives in all him. of us. He lives like, in all of us. They're not sending their best and brightest time travelers. <laughs> they're sending rapists. Mike, you... <laughs> they're sending. <laughs> <laughs> they're fucking creaming rapists. Time travelers. Mike, if you're listening, if you listen to this episode, I don't, I don't know why you would, but if you do, just know that we, we do miss you and we are carrying on your spirit through this episode. Mike, if you're listening to this, which I'm almost <laughs> positive you're not, but if you are, I'm going to kick your child. <laughs> <laughs> wow. There it is. I said it. Hey, I don't even regret it. Discord was punning his kid last week, so. Exactly. They're yeah. on board. Okay, yeah. so this is just a follow up. This is just yeah, it's really it's really <laughs> okay. just the second coming of the kicking of his child. <laughs> second kicking of Christ. <laughs> second Anyways, <laughs> so <laughs> there was actually a mistranslation. It's not the second coming, it's the second kicking. Like <laughs> what's the second coming of like whatever like the fucking like the rapture? Uh, no, 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 no. I'm thinking like mm, we're talking the Book of Mormon. Like, what would be the oh. second coming of like whatever the Mormons believe? That's just is, the isn't that their whole man. thing? Is yeah, isn't there the like, end time supposed to be like an apocalypse? Yeah. All right, so second coming. Like Mike's ends. baby is the child of the apocalypse. All right, cool. We're, we got there. Um, all right. Anyways, <laughs> so Jonas, where we learn this man's name. This is the time traveler. Uh, dum, if you didn't, dum, dum, if you're not following. Jonas said he was an explorer for one of the dimensional travel agencies, and he was looking in a new uncharted dimension and came upon our Earth. So he just cummed all over our Earth. Hmm. And he said, this is pretty okay to do. I knew they were going to turn us into porn somehow. New we haven't even talked... To, there's one Born. thing we haven't hit yet, and I'll, I'll get us there at some point if we don't come to it. But anyways, so they talked a lot about many of the similarities and differences between their worlds, and one of them was be, uh, the Beatles. Uh, so they're just, you know, shooting the shit, basically, in this guy's house, talking about the Beatles. And um, he actually mentioned, Jonas mentions that he had just got back from seeing them perform a concert in his time. Uh, which is like, you that know, That doesn't like, make sense. Ooh, what? Uh, so they go on, uh, they go on to talk about how they're broken up in our time and that some of them had even passed away. Now, Jonas, uh, had followed him to a, basically said, come here, I'm going to show you this cool shelf that I have, which was <laughs> essentially just a shelf of cassettes, uh, because apparently in their 2000 and whatever the fuck, um, <laughs> they don't have a viable form of, uh, music. Digital media? Yeah. <laughs> Doug, um, I'm sorry, but if you told me, come here, I have a cool set of cassettes to show you, <laughs> I would tell you to go fuck yourself. I, that's that's right. like Awful. the starting of a murder. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't it's believe what? any you, civilization could make an interdimensional time portal and not come up with a better way to store media than to cassettes. store media. Than so yeah. fucking so the, cells. So like. apparently, <laughs> apparently, in this world, and this is like directly from the story, uh, he he mentions like CDs and stuff, and they're like, yeah, they never they never caught on here. They were just like, we really like these shit cassette tapes. That I feel we like have. somebody who somebody wrote this story who has never had to deal with cassettes before. <laughs> yeah, never had to fucking rewind one of those bitches. Oh taking God. notes, taking notes. They're definitely born after 2000. Yep. Um, 100%. Does not right. know what a cassette is. Okay. <laughs> so basically, yeah, he, he brings them to the shelf with a bunch of cassettes on it. And there were some of the same albums that the Beatles had, weirdly. But there were also four albums that he had never heard of before. So they listened to a few songs off of some of the albums and basically the dude asked him, he's like, hey, can I get a copy of one of these tapes? And Jonas basically says, listen here, motherfucker, that is not happening. You are a big, stupid asshole for asking. <laughs> this is a safety hazard. And again, you are a big, dumb asshole. So very, very vehemently said, nope, not today. 
Um, mm-hmm. And so dude was like, all right, I won't take anything. Like, you know, I, it, it's for sure. It's fine. Whatever. And basically after about an hour, Jonas gets a, a ding dong at the door <laughs> and he has to go and, you know, obviously check who it is. Duh. And Buddy immediately snatches a cassette tape off the shelf. He's like, this is mine. Like, fuck you. So once he does that, uh, they end up ev- uh, eating a quick dinner. And then he says, I, I really need to get going. Like, please let me go home now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want I to don't be want, here I don't anymore. To, I don't have to listen to um, <laughs> please, God. <laughs> so hell. Jonas loads him and his dog up in the machines and sends him back home. And, you know, he's like, wow, when I got home, I was in the field and there was a big old fucking burn mark from the portal that I went through. And that was super weird because it was near my car. And then uh, pretty much that's where the story ends. He's basically like, unfortunately, I don't have any information about the tape other than that it was written on the card sleeve. The track names were written as well as the album title, which was called Everyday Chemistry. That was the the cassette album that he took that the Beatles never made. Um, and basically he goes on to say, lastly, if there's anyone out there that has experienced anything like this, please contact me. Some of these, uh, the things this guy said to me almost make me wonder if this isn't the first time dimensional travelers that have been here. And he signs it off as James Richards. And he also Hmm. gives an email saying, oh yeah, the email's the best. Please email me at, at. The Beatles, the never, Beatles broke up never broke up at something.com. Yeah, I was like Yahoo.com or something, <laughs> something stupid like shit. that. Yeah. But yeah, so he's just like telling a story on his website to whoever, I guess, comes across this. And I, I think a There's lot a of Facebook. people will, considering, you know, the Lost album or whatever. But like, yeah. Um, yeah, either way. Uh, that's the story. That's pretty yeah. much the story. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was a, it was a, it was unique. If you go to the website and read the actual story, I very very much cut a lot of the you like, left out, out upper but, school. Like, you did. You left yeah. out the upper school. Yeah. Upper school. Upper school mm-hmm. is what they call high school in his dimension, apparently. Yep. Oh right, right. Well, I was like, I'll upper school your mouth, bro. <laughs> he does. Um, <laughs> he does. He goes over like some minor differences. Like, there's a small conversation where they like, talk about like. Some minor differences. Yeah, that. it's like, it, yeah, I, I pretty it, much... The speaker's like, made hey. out of crinkled up cardboard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Stuff like that. It was like really dumb stuff, but, you know. Yeah. Whatever dimension this is, I want no part in it, so. Yeah. No, so God, God no. Mm, I agree. Um, it's probably right? why the Beatles are still... An interdimensional time travel machine. They were probably like, yeah, we need to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> we're really so fucking smart, but God damn it, are we boring. Yo, oh God, yeah. That's why you can buy one on every fucking corner store. They're like, yeah, get the hell out of here. This is this is terrible. Oh, one thing I didn't mention was that when the dog traveled through the time portal, he came out and then shook himself off like he was wet, and I thought that was neat. <laughs> hey, man. The, 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 it's in the details. Yeah, yeah. look at the details. If, if um, little, these details prove doggy. the story is real. They, they do. Um, it was wet with tachyons. So you talked about the album. Everyday yeah. chemistry. I don't. I feel like nobody has ever heard of that album. Nobody in our dimension has ever heard of that album. Mm. Should but, we like? Should we sample it? Matt, are you from an, uh, the another dimension? Am I from another? Yeah, I'm from another. That dimension. makes so much sense. <laughs> I am ring, from the Beatles I am dimension. Paul or fucking I get one of them. <laughs> I'm one of them. I'm all I'm of them of stuck them. together. <laughs> God damn it. Everyday Chemistry is this album that came from this other dimension that was totally made by the Beatles there and definitely not made by the Beatles here. And this album has 11 tracks on it. And they are n- four guys. N- like, <laughs> yes, the Beatles are four favorite. guys, but that is also the first track on the album. Four guys. Mm-hmm. Track two is Talking to Myself. Then we got every anybody else sick to death. Jen, I'm just sitting here, soldier boy, over the ocean, days like these, Saturday night, and Mr. Gator's Swamp Jamboree. And if you go to the website that we've mentioned, uh, you can actually listen to these tracks, and you can download them in a zip file, and grace your own ear holes with this album. Uh, oh, it's great. Yeah, and it's, I mean... Whole thing. It sounds the like website. the Beatles. Uh, we, it does? Yeah. Yeah, you want to use play? code Diluty twenty uh, for twenty 
extra seconds a song. Let me go there. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> Try it. It might work. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I guess insert a couple of those snippety dips. Do you, do, you, do, you do you want me to sample them right now? I have, I have one pulled up. I can yeah, sample four guys for if you want, because that one's probably the best. I, yeah, put four yeah, guys in my ears. All right, I'm going to put four guys in a lot of people's ears right oh, now. And uh, it's that like was that. In a silent disco. Oh, you guys didn't hear any no. of that? <laughs> no, they definitely didn't. Uh, well, I didn't set Discord up for that. Sorry, guys. You just got to watch us dance to nothing. There was just one part that just goes Ringo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was like, Ringo? Yeah, we we can cut this part. Um, but Discord, it it sounds like the beginning of a of like an analog horror. <laughs> yeah, it's actually terrifying. <laughs> it's horrifying. Here, let me let me just. Link it's this Uncanny out Valley Discord. Beatles. Oh god, like, yeah, yeah. Shoot this to the Discord. Let them listen to the, as many of these as they want because they're very strange. Yeah, it's like, like it's, I, we've made a reference to this before, but you talked about, and I don't know what episode we talked about this in, but you made a reference to that image that's like what it's like to have a stroke, and you can see the oh, image, yeah. and you can see that these are definitely objects, but you can't quite make yeah. out what they are. I feel like that's what listening to this is like. I feel like <laughs> this, this is, is the it, Beatles, but I, I can't quite. <laughs> Understood. This is what it sounds like to have a stroke. Yeah, <laughs> that's what this part is. We've got the we've got the visual. Now we have the audio. Well, we yeah. were listening like ahead of time from recording. Yeah, and oh I didn't God. have my headphones on, <laughs> and it was just like I was like listening to a domestic abuse. Yeah. Oh, oh. it's just, like it's just... in the background is what the first part of that song sounds like. I was like, hmm. Okay. It's just so strange, but like it's it's very clearly the Beatles. Yeah, but it like, is it I, is the Beatles. Yeah, as soon as soon as the music comes in and they start they start singing and they're like the 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 instruments come in like yep like, yep that's the fucking Beatles and I generally enjoy the Beatles for the most part but this was kind of cool to like hear whatever this was you know oh yeah hundred percent ah please don't <laughs> deep throat oh. the mic <laughs> oh. 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 just in uh, case you were wondering what was happening well <laughs> now that we've talked about the story behind this album. And now that we've gone over what the album contains, do we want to just go over some theories as to, um, like... Yeah, I think that makes sense, honestly. Yeah, Doug, did you mention... So, I know that you talked about the story a bit. I, did we touch on, like, who wrote this? Yeah, so it was James Dick. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, technically, But yes. no, it was James <laughs> Richard, which is a... A very obvious, well, not obvious, I guess, to most people, but it is a a, a pseudonym for. If you're a Beatles uh, fan, you probably the recognize first this. names of Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr. Yeah, the legal first names. Uh, it's James Paul McCartney and fuck, it's Richard something. I, Ringo, Ringo Starr. Ringo, Ringo, Ringo Starr. Star. Yes, that's yeah. <laughs> that is canonically true. Don't Perfect. at me. Well, that, you heard it here first. I guess before we talk about the theories, should we just do a real or fake? Yeah, that makes sense. I think we kind of have. I think to. we're at that point. Yeah, yeah, and it's. I know we're only about a half hour in. Um, there's. A, don't worry, guys. There's a lot more coming. I have a. I have a bunch to say. It's very bad shit. But yeah, let's do real or fake. Who Three, wants to start? two, one. Uh, actually, nope, 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 nope. What are we defining? What's real? What's fake? Well, real would be um, that the story to... is real, <laughs> and fake story. would be that the story yeah. isn't real. <laughs> real is, did this guy go to another dimension, talk to a man named Jonas, gotcha. and steal ah, a cassette ah. tape with an album that was never made by the Beatles on it? Fair enough. I was thinking more like, is this unreleased album real versus not? 
but the story is I think whole, that is the same thing. It, it, yeah, I well, guess you could say that. Okay. Yeah. Well, all right. All right. We will touch on let's, that in just Let's a just real or fake it, and <laughs> yeah, then we can get into all of that, because I think there's so much more to be said that we can't say. Yeah, let's just do it. Before that. Let's rip the bandaid off. Doug, count us down. Five, four, three, two. I fucked up. <laughs> 99 Damn 98 This is not an Andrew WK concert We cannot do this <laughs> Oh my god that was the funniest shit ever But one real Fake ring. Oh shit yes. It's real Ringo it's real <laughs> it's, <laughs> Insert mic it's real Jerry <laughs> It's real Jerry <laughs> No it's fake It's fake. Uh, yeah I, I mean I, I think it's fake I think we all think it's fake yeah. Um the website's called the fucking the Beatles never broke up dot com. Dot com. <laughs> like, what is what is on. that what what does that have to do with anything? I don't know, man. I just feel like if you're gonna talk about dimensional travel, why is the thing you're up? focused on is would, the Beatles never broke up? You would provide adequate yeah. evidence for it. Like you, yeah, would you wouldn't make show the pictures Beatles of that. the whole center of this story. No. God no. I mean, so to be fair, on the site he's got a bunch of pictures. And they're not even good. On, it's just like on, I could hold on. Hold on. He's got a bunch of pictures of the cassette tape and some dirt. It's a mountain. <laughs> you know like, how many places have fucking mountains? Like I understand uh, the, like all of uh, the places for the most part, except for like legitimately. Except, except for, for Illinois, where we are. Yeah. Illinois has none. But other than that, there's at least one. Yeah. This is like there's these pictures don't fucking prove anything. It just shows that you stuffed a note card inside a clear cassette tape and wrote a bunch of shit on there. Yeah. And also took pictures of dirt. Like, <laughs> cool, man. It, it, it's almost like reverse psychology, though, because it's like, if you could... Yeah. If it was really well done, it might be like, man, this is too well done. But then if it's like slightly half-assed, it's like, man, if somebody was going to fake this, maybe they'd put some more effort into it. So maybe it is fake or real. Fair. I don't know. I guess if like God what the fuck it. is this image? What is that? What are you, what are we looking at right now? It looks like just a bunch of dirt with hay piled on top of it. They lost like, me at upper school. Oh dude. <laughs> they lost me so early on this one, but for those confused what I'm talking about. <laughs> here <laughs> here you go. It yeah, looks like, school, it looks like a picture of the surface of Mars, but some termites ate it. W but also definitive black and white. proof <laughs> parallel dimensions it is dirt with a side of more I, dirt i will say there's more proof here than when we talked about mel's hole that's nobody true. drew a picture nobody drew this a picture the, this is the inverse of mel's hole this is mel's mountain dirt dirt mountain dirt <laughs> yeah. mel's pile of hay. mel's mountains <laughs> is mel's mountain are, is Mel's Mounds similar to Lady Lumps? Uh, depends on what type of cancer you have, front but butt. sure. Mm. <laughs> Mel's front butt. Yeah, Bart, no, so like these pictures, Bartsmel. yes, these pictures exist, but like what the fuck do they prove? I mean, they don't. Um, yeah, okay. Definitively <laughs> don't prove anything. I could go and take a picture of like a close up of my wall and be like, guys, hey, listen <laughs> here. <laughs> I went to another dimension. They have this color purple. I've never seen this color purple in my life. Hey, okay. ARG made. Let's go. Jason, do you have a theory about where this story came from? I particular? do, actually. Okay. So, theories about like where the fuck this came from. So, I did some digging, and I did find a short story that was published in the magazine Interzone in April of 1998. And it's an alternate history short story by somebody named by the name of Stephen Baxter. And it's called the 12th album. Um, it's a, this whole story about this imaginary 12th album recorded by the Beatles called God. Now I know if you're a diehard Beatles fan at this point, you're like, well, they put out 12 albums. Well, this was published before they started counting yellow submarine and magical mist, the magical mystery tour, which is like their live album. If you get rid of those, there was 11 albums. And so this album called God, according to Stephen Baxter, was their 12th album. Now, I read through the entirety of, oh, my God, is this another one, Doug? I just keep okay, going. Okay, shut up. No. What? 
Um, so this story, it goes over, uh, these two people that were in the Navy and they were in essentially, the they were mourning, they were mourning their dead friend um, by visiting the ship. They used to essentially sail out to out of port on together. And when they got on the ship, they did, it was uh, permanently docked. Like it was, it's never going out again. And when they got there, they found their old like living quarters and they discovered that because it had been docked, it was never actually like cleaned especially because they never planned on using it again because like catastrophic failure, it was super old. Um, so they found this guy's like dorm and it had all of his albums still in there. And that's where they found this, this 12th album called God. And it was just this like black matte album cover uh, vinyl. And it had been, it looked like it had been played like maybe once or twice. And the weird thing is, is when they start talking about this, uh, it's one guy who knows nothing about music talking to this other guy that was on his squad that knows a fuckload about music, and he loves the Beatles. And so, like, they're listening to the Beatles, and he's going over, like, oh, this is, like, this song, and this is what, what this is who produced it, and this is who's in charge of it, just rattling off trivia after trivia. And um, I swear to God, if we are going over Michio Kaku in this episode, Doug, I'm going to fucking kill you. I... We will be. Okay, cool. Fucking hell. Um, so in the story, uh, they're looking through this guy's albums and they find this Matt Black album called God. And this this guy who's like a super Beatles buff looks at it and goes, What the fuck is this? And they start Kanye. listening to it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, like. exactly. <laughs> it's Kanye. Um It's Kanye, Ringo. It's Kanye. Ringo, you ever heard of this Kanye guy? <laughs> Ringo. Um, We've got so, Kanye in the studio. So in this story, they listen to the entirety no of this album. Man should have all that power. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, I, I really hate that I gave you like a, a stop the podcast card. <laughs> Hell yeah. Like instantly and power, every man. single time. <laughs> you have a lot of power right now. Um, so they listen to this full album and it's just these two guys shooting the shit. The guy who knows a ton about music um, is telling his other squad member about like when this was released and what track this is. But the weird thing is, is he mentions uh, that, yes, in this world, there were not 12 albums. And so the other guy goes, the fuck are you talking about? He goes, well, in the other world, there, there are 12 because Yoko died, which means the Beatles never broke up, which means they released more albums, which means that's why this exists. And he's like, Okay, so you're telling me you got this from another fucking dimension? And he goes, I didn't say that, but if that's how you want to explain it, sure. And then they go over how this alternate dimension, Yoko died because she got hit by a meteor. Hell yeah. And then acid <laughs> rain happened and most of humanity died. And so the only way that somebody was going to warn the other dimensions is for one of them to get out and apparently bring a Beatles album with them <laughs> to show that like, yeah, yeah that sounds yeah, right. It's like, it's like when they launch shit into space and they put stuff on board so that yeah. when future civilizations find remnants of humanity, they're like, Oh, Hey, look, they know that we know how to draw. Yeah. And they hey, look, it's Beatles the book album. Twilight. Yeah. Yeah. It, that's, and it's like, okay, so, so let me get this straight. Your parallel dimension got hit by a meteor, and now the surface of your world is covered in acid rain consistently, which means you can only live below the surface, and in order to warn us, you brought us an unreleased Beatles album called God. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds right. And it's stored it's on a Navy ship that isn't allowed to leave port anymore. And that's the only place you can find it. Also, sounds so right, is yeah. the Navy yeah. ship not allowed to leave port because it's got this album on it? No, it's it. They just took the engines out. Like, <laughs> like they just literally like. So well, this how is done. the did they go into how the record ended up on there? Uh, the, so the they found basically what they said is they found the living quarters, like their their oh, okay, quote unquote barracks while they were stationed aboard this ship, and because it'd been uh essentially like stationed permanently in on dock. They uh, 
This is the I I'm gonna derail us real yeah, quick. I know because you are. I know you are. This is giving me the the <laughs> the biggest dumbass weeb thought I've ever had in my life. But this is reminding me of Dongan Rampa too, because they oh, have shit. they have an airport. Yeah, but all the planes have no engines. Yep, because they're stupid. <laughs> yeah, or well, that's, for whatever reason, I don't know. From what I, I have understand, a better theory. I please think, get us get me yeah, the fuck let's out do of that. here. Let's no, do I'm, that. I'm I'm. I'm Taking you right back in. I think oh, the reason fuck. this record was on this, I'm I'm on board with this one. I believe this one 100%. I think the reason this record was on board this ship was that they they took John Lennon and stuck him inside a yellow submarine with this album, and they launched it in through a wormhole, and it Into ended the sun, and it ended up in <laughs> our ocean. <laughs> And then Yo. this Navy ship <laughs> saw it on radar, and they shot it down. And that. then when they went to recover it, they were like, oh, fuck. I think we it's fucked the up. <laughs> <laughs> so the, and the only thing they could recover from the wreckage was this unreleased 12th album. <laughs> oh, and, no. And that's why we this killed, ship was never Ringo allowed Star. to leave port again. And this <laughs> album was supposed to stay on it. So another derailment here. Just gonna just gonna throw this out here. Okay. <laughs> so when I was talking about the rapid fire questions, right? Yeah. I yeah. was like, he's asking a bunch of parallel dimension. K, K yeah. the P, everyone. K the P. Guys, we've um, set our entire podcast up for this moment. <laughs> yeah, it's really all coming full fucking circle. Um Michio Kaku. Oh god. Right? I all love the questions that, man, that but... this man was asking were like directly if you don't know That's who this, this guy man's is, department. he is like a theoretical physicist, okay? Specializing and, in quantum physics. Yeah, he is like the guy for quantum physics. He's You, you probably saw him on Ancient Aliens a handful of times. You've seen him, you probably seen him on uh, whatever that fucking Cosmos. explaining. Yeah, Cosmos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's on there. Like, um, he's everywhere. He's a super he's well awesome. recognized. He, he's super intelligent. Hyper like, intelligent. Yeah. Like, just really, really cool. One of if the you, be best physicists of our time. I won't go super into details on this guy, but if you can, just, like, like maybe read one of this guy's books, because they're, like, super good. Like, he they're has actually really, really shit, too. I know, it's I so know. Good. He, this guy is well-versed and yeah. very fun to just learn about. Oh, yeah. Just off-handed. Spark a blunt, guys. Sit down, watch some Michio Kaku. Your life will be full. Put that meth in the pipe and fucking get to it. <laughs> do we want to go over what this album actually is? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, please right. do. So the reason that we know this is fake is because uh, the astute Beatles fans among you may take a listen to this first track like I did and go, hey, that sounds really fucking familiar. And the reason that sounds really fucking familiar is because all the tracks on this album are just like uh -huh. five tracks from different albums in the Beatles solo, solo careers just smacked on top of each other and like cut up and spliced together. And so you're going to hear something, you know, in there somewhere. Um, I'm not going to go through all of it, but like, for example, the first track is a combination of I'm Moving On by John Lennon, Band on the Run by Paul McCartney, which is the one that I immediately recognize. When oh, We yeah. Was Fab yeah. by George Harrison, Vertical Man by Ringo Starr, Beatlemania in Action from The Beatles Story, and then an interview. <laughs> oh, <shit>. <laughs> <laughs> an interview with the, like, snippets from an interview with the Beatles, which is probably the domestic violence part that uh, Doug was referencing from the interview, We Were Four Guys and That's All. Um, so, yeah, it, it's just it's just a bunch of tracks from their solo careers that somebody mashed together to make things that sound like the Beatles but are not the cohesive Beatles. And if you look up the wiki for this album, there's actually a theory that's just like briefly referenced in here that some people speculate that the timing of the release of this website is not coincidental because not it happened remotely. to fall in line with... The release of the Beatles' original remastered albums, as well as the Beatles' rock band, and all of them, all yeah, of them, all, all this of stuff that came out at the same, the same time. time. So, uh, some people speculate that this was just viral marketing to try to draw attention to the Beatles' like recent re-release. Because re you know they have works. not gotten enough attention. Yeah, people don't know who the Beatles are. 
people don't have no idea who yeah. the most famous rock band they in the were world very is. obscure I've before never this actually even heard of the beatles before this story no okay well hmm. uh is there is there They're anything? important doug no 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 <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not no, especially no, not, not because of our last episode Oh God, yeah, dude. I I wanted Actually, to mention that. Like, uh, this <laughs> this is what first got the Beatles on the map, but Ash Vlogs is what really took them into the mainstream. I'm I'm yeah. really I'm stealing this from Wasn't Simple Simon. 2018. I'm, yeah. I'm 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 stealing this from Simple Simon. I'm gonna give him the credit for yes, this. Yes, 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 yes. Are you telling me a Beatle wrote this music? Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> if you go to deludy.com slash deludypod.com, uh, you'll find links. To our merch. You will. You'll find links to all of our social media pages. You'll find links to our Patreon, where you can go and you can give us something, or you can give us nothing. Yep. I love yep. that Mike yep. is here. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, I've basically cloned him and shoved him inside of myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's yeah. just a normal Tuesday. <laughs> hey, out of the three of us, I think Mike would have felt the best going in. Mm-hmm. 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 I think. Mm-hmm. Just go to Deludy.com or Linktree.com slash DeludyPod if you want or DeludyPod.com. There's links to everything that you could possibly want there. We got fucking TikToks. We're uploading TikTok videos. We got we got YouTube. Ooh. If you go to YouTube.com slash add DeludyPod, you'll find some the video versions of all of our episodes as well as the occasional extra bonus uh, random video that we make every now and then. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, I think that pretty well covers it. Doug, do you have anything else you want to say to the people before we leave? Uh, you know, besides slapping your peens and beans together, which is, you know, typical, it's known. It's, 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 it's it, we know this already, right? Um, one thing that we were talking about that I would kind of like to put into the either and just have people doing for us potentially within the next couple of months, like maybe like a, a nice little treat for when Mike's back from Ooh, yeah. being a dad. Ooh. Um, we we really enjoyed doing our our dark web box video. Really fucking loved it. We'd kind of like for I don't know I don't know maybe our listeners to put together some kind of weird mystery box for us or something and like send it to Mike's house. Yeah, well no, uh, we can send it to the PO box. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, PO kid box now. He might get really upset. Yeah, let's that's, that's not fair, let's fair. not do that. Fair, if, fair, fair. If you it, PO box, but address it to Mike. Yeah, it, you just send us your version of a dark web box. Yeah. We we want to like start unboxing your weird shit. Please, please, please. Stay with inside the legal means of things yeah. to send us. Um, <laughs> I don't like care. Just, I really I, properly. Yeah, yeah. I don't care what you send. Just mm. l- no fentanyl. Um, please, God. Please, was we um, will ingest it. No and excrement our death will be on your hands. I have Narcan, but I don't fucking want to use it. I just I don't want any any of that. Sh- I don't want to no. die, no, and no, I don't no. want to touch your. I don't want to be afraid of our Duke. listeners, man. Like I just don't. Yeah, You're not just already? just. Please a little send us I'm some afraid of the most of anyone who chooses to be here. <laughs> oh yeah, you guys are fucking terrifying. The fact that you choose to be here is insane. But yeah, here we are. it's it's really weird. We're real close to being on a list for something, I'm sure. But I'm like, pretty sure we've already hit the U. <laughs> the, the FBI's cult <laughs> alert list. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. But uh, yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Like, if you guys want to do that, if that's something you think would be fun and want to see us do live on, uh, you know, video. It'd be very similar to what we did for our uh, dark web box, and uh, yeah, we'll unbox it and we'll make a video for you guys, and we'll <laughs> make sure Mike pukes to some degree. And I'm so excited for the first box it. that's like, it's like a four foot by four foot box of just applesauce. I'm so excited to get something like that. It'll be great. Yeah, yeah. Send us shit. Send us <laughs> four four squared applesauce, please. Jason, what do you guys say? <laughs> Uh, as fucking always, stay paranoid, but, like, next time you listen to the Beatles, um, listen better. Listen more closely, and remember that the Beatles are timeless and transdimensional, apparently. Um, I don't know. Don't shit in your socks. Hell yeah. That's all I got. Okay. Uh, How about you, Matt? What do you got? Uh, Give some good advice. Some I wanna, sage advice. I want to say that the one thing that we did learn here today is that it is uh, inter transdimensional law that if you're going to launch yourself into another timeline, you have to do it in a yellow submarine and you have to take 
a Beatles album with you. It's a requirement. So yep. Um, yep. just keep that in um, mind. If you get to another, show up inside out. Yeah, if you if you get to another dimension and you d- even if you're in a yellow submarine and you, if you don't have a Beatles record with you, they will kill you on sight. So yeah, yeah. yeah the interdimensional police will uh, put your spleen where your brain is. Yeah, exactly. The, or, they'll put PS2s where the wheels used to be. <laughs> in this one. Hi everybody. Yes. All yes. right, we love you guys. Thanks for you guys. <laughs> dealing with us this. Today. <laughs> this today. This today. God damn. This oh, today. The Lord, Mike. Our the God. Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Bye. So. And this is our Lord and Savior <laughs> of Michael. Goodbye, everybody. Don't look under the internet. Welcome back to Inner Night. We are so glad to know you are still here. To start the night, repeat after me. Each breath I take is proof that I am still advancing. The voices I hear at night are here to help me. Nothing is impossible. Repeat that as many times as you need this week. Now we have a message in a bottle from another member of Inner Night. Christian says, I don't know why, but it's become incredibly foggy outside at night. Everyone drive safe and be careful. What a wonderful message. Your lucky numbers for this week are 102, 105, 108, 101, 47, 100, 47, 49, 106, 112, 75, 112, 45, 50, 84, 49, 80, 52, 90, 69, 70, 76, 50, 108, 120, 74, 80, 71, 56, 86, 76, 67, 78, 114, 119, 112, 87, 114, 118, 85, 47, 118, 105, 101, 119, 63, 117, 115, 112, 61, 115, 104, 97, 114, 101, 95, 108, 105, 110, 107. This week we would like to suggest our general members to take long walks at night to get some fresh air. There are plenty of nighttime outdoor activities that will help boost your mental health and boost your dreams. Speaking of, right before you drift off to sleep, Try to imagine a very, very long, deep pit that you cannot see the bottom of. Imagine reaching into it, trying to grab onto something you cannot see. This will make your dreams be happier, and the following day will be more fulfilling. It represents the plunge into darkness we take every day as we take more risks and try new things. This concludes this week's message from Inner Night. Remember to leave a message for another member to receive. We will see you again next week. Good night.